across the aisle. Let's spend a couple minutes greeting everybody. It's been a while since we've seen each other. Hey Amen. We're going to do things a little bit different today. We're going to start off with announcements and prayer requests. So you can be seated while we run through these announcements. First and foremost, let's not forget our uh, services this week. We will have a midweek service on Wednesday. And then next Sunday, um, 1.30 prayer, 2 o'clock church. So we'll have the same uh, schedule next Sunday as we do this Sunday. And then after uh, service at the conclusion of the altar call today, um, we will be having a meal in the gym. Everyone is invited, church, family, guests. If you bring them, take them over there. When you go into the gym, just have a seat, and then they will uh, call table by table once everybody gets in there and gets settled. Um, Pastor wants to thank everybody for being faithful with their tithes and offerings. Um, we all know that with the way the year has been, you know, some churches have struggling, but our church has been on top of it, and we appreciate that. Um, and then we will be taking our Christmas for Christ offering later on in the service, so we'll call our uh, ushers up for that. So if you have your envelopes, just uh, get those prepared for later on in the service. And then we only have a couple prayer requests. Um, Robert Hart requested prayer last night, so let's um, keep him in prayer. And then the church in Sierra Vista, Brother Brian mentioned that a lot of them are doing a lot better, but they do have a few that are still struggling and are on oxygen. So let's keep those uh, that church in prayer. If you have an unspoken request, Sister Laura, it's so great to see you. We have definitely missed you. Amen. Amen. When Sister Laura is not here, we definitely notice, so we're glad you're with us this, this afternoon. And let's take these two needs to the Lord. Amen. Oh, God, you see these needs, Lord, that are brought before you tonight. God, we ask, Lord, that you touch the church heart, God. Continue to touch the church, God, is here in this. So God, strengthen them, God. Give them, give them the strength to gather again, Lord. Amen. We're going to have Brother Jaime come, and he's going to open with some remarks and a testimony. Really love and appreciate God. Thank him for the opportunity to be here this afternoon. Um, Sister Kelly asked me if I would say something on Wednesday night. I said, why me? But anyway, here I am. Um, and I just want to give God the thanks, the glory. Everything that I do, I do it hoping to please God. And everything that I do, um, you got to bear with me a little bit. Comes in time in life where these things just. Everybody knows. 
I just want to read a couple of passages of scripture this morning or this afternoon. Um, when Sister Kayla asked me to, if I would give a testimony a little, say something, I began to think about it, you know, and, and until last night, um, something really popped into my head. And it was this scripture that I heard 40 some odd years ago uh, when I first got in church. And reading from Corinthians, from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. That is so true. You know, that we walk by faith. We, we think about um, the three Hebrew children. You know, they could have, you know, said, man, we've, we've lived for God. We've done this and that. We think, we, ask, we think about Daniel in the lion's den. And the Bible in chapter Hebrews number 11 and verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when we think about these three Hebrew children, Daniel, you know, there's going to come things in our lives that are going to happen to us. There's going to be situations, circumstances that are going to come our way. But if we ponder upon those circumstances, those situations, they can deter us from living from God. So we need to have our faith in God. No matter what we see going on in the world, this world churches tell you, you know, it is, it's not getting any better. You, me and my sister were talking last night as we came home from Fresno, and we began to, to, to talk about certain situations, certain individuals, and we just said all we got to do is put them in God's hands. You know, let God take control. Let God have their ways. So one, you know, eight years ago this week, I thought about you, Sister Myra. Eight years ago this past Tuesday, I lost my mom. And that was hard. And I could have easily said, God, it's, it's not worth it. But after living 32 years for God, I couldn't let that deter me. I couldn't let that situation, I couldn't let that circumstance deter my walk with God. Yes, the, the devil may have has tripped me up and I got discouraged and I got hurt, but yet there's also another passage of scripture that I want to read and it goes like this. And he, we know that all things work together for the good to them that loved God. I loved God. No matter what the situation was, I loved God. To them who are called according to his purpose. I imagine that the God has a purpose for my life. I just need to make sure that I'm in the perfect will of God. And the Bible says, who is he that condemneth? For it is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God. Whom also maketh intercession for us. So if God's making intercession for us, why can't I continue that? that walk that he gave me 38 years ago or 40 years ago. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Church, God loves us. So if God shed his blood on, on Calvary, over 2,000 years ago, how much more can we live for God through the trials and the tribulations and things that we see in front of us and things that are going on around us? For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Church, we have faced a lot of trials and tribulations, but the Bible tells us that neither things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, the God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And my desire as church is to make heaven my home. And that should be every one of our desires is to make heaven our home. No matter what comes our way, no matter what tribulation that we go through, the trials that we go through, we have had to have that determination that we're walking by faith and not by sight because there are a lot of things that we can look at and we can see and say, man, that's not worth it. It's not worth living for God. But yet, like the Bible says, and I heard it last night, if, 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 if me living the way I live is not a requirement for me to make heaven, well, then I've got it made. If it's just for, to live and to die and that's it, that, but I don't want to take that chance. I don't want to take that chance. Because if I'm living for God and doing all that I can to live for God, 
And people say, well, there's really no heaven, there's no, there's no hell. Well, I, I beg to differ with that. So my desire is that God, my life, I want to live it pleasing to him. And I really love and appreciate God. Thank you for your time. Amen. What a great little way to open this service. Amen. We're going to sing a couple songs. Yes, these are congregational songs, but as Pastor talked to us before service, just because they're congregational songs or Christmas carols, that does not mean that we're going to sing them differently. We came to worship God today no matter what. This may be a special service, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't change the fact why we are here. We know why we are why we come to church. The the world, you know, they use this holiday to celebrate and give gifts, and that, that's all fine and dandy, but we know the true reason for Christmas. Amen? Amen. Worship with us as we sing a couple songs.
bring us goodness and light. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Amen. 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 The next individual that we're going to have speak, I don't know if she's ever got up here and spoken. If she has, it might have been while I was away. Sister Tabitha, make your way on up here. Um, a lot of you guys might see Tabitha back there and think that she's a shy, little, timid person, but if you knew that, if you knew the real Tabitha. Praise the Lord. So this is just something that I wrote down. Kayla asked me to say something from my heart, but I'm bad at coming up with things on the spot. So we always talk about December as the busiest time of the year, and for most of us, it is. Anyone who works in retail has to deal with the holiday crowds, and those of us who don't are usually part of those crowds. We have gifts to buy and decorations to put up. We have desserts to make and family gatherings to plan. And although we know every year we all need a reminder of the best gift we received on Christmas, Jesus is the real gift, and we should remember that all throughout the year. I encourage everyone this year to do something a little different and give unlike you have before. Don't give a gift out of obligation or out of tradition, but give a sacrificial gift. Give to someone you don't normally give to. Take an elder in the church out to dinner. Um, bake your neighbor a cake. We can never outgive God, and we will never give anything more special than his gift to us. But if we can give of ourselves more this year, we can show the same love God showed to us on Christmas. Siempre hablamos que diciembre es el tiempo más ocupado del año. Y si es para la mayoría de nosotros. Alguien que trabaja en las tiendas sabe las multitudes que hay y los que no trabajan en las tiendas son parte de la multitud. Tenemos que comprar regalos y poner decoraciones. Tenemos que hacer postres y tamales. Aunque ya sabemos, cada año necesitamos recordar el mejor regalo que podríamos recibir. Jesús. Quiero que todos hacen algo diferente esta Navidad y da algo diferente. No te das un regalo porque tienes que hacerlo o es tradición, pero un regalo de sacrificio. Dale a alguien a quien no, normalmente no le das. Lleva a una señora a cenar o cocina algo por tu, por tu vecino. Nunca podemos dar más que Dios, pero si podemos dar más de nosotros este año, podemos mostrar el mismo amor que Dios nos mostró en Navidad. Amen. As she was um, talking her little thing that she wrote there, I mean, the Spanish, I understood some of it. I definitely understood tamale. I mean, you don't, you don't have to know too much Spanish to understand tamale. But um, one thing that she said, you know, do something. Bake your neighbor a cake. And that really struck a, a chord with me because your neighbor is the person that knows you the most. They see you all the time. They know how you are. They know that you're a Christian. But if you do that little thing, you never know how it could affect them. You know, something that's not going to affect you a lot could mean so much more to them. I read a story one time that said um, this, this family had uh, neighbors that were, they weren't well off. They were really poor, and they always came over and asked for eggs and milk and flour, and, and the family was more than willing to give it to them because they had plenty. So they would give it to them, and... Um, Every once in a while, the, the family that, had, that was more well-off would go over, and uh, she would come back with you know, a little bit of salt or a little bit of sugar. And the little boy said, Mom, why do you go ask them for sugar and salt? She says, because sugar and salt don't cost that much. And they're always asking me for things, and I don't mind it. But it, if I ask them for something small that they can afford, they're going to come to me more often, and I don't mind that. So even though it could be something small as, you know, sugar and salt, it could go a long ways. Amen. Worship with the ladies as they sing a little bilingual song here.
we aren't lost because we have a Savior. Amen? We're going to have Oliver come up and uh, read a poem. Oliver, you better walk sideways. You're sharp if you walk like that. You might cut somebody around here. If I am, if I am a king, my crown will give to him. If I am a crow, a king will be a king. If I am a shepherd, the best I might be. If I am an angel, I'd give him my wings. If I am the wise man, I give my wealth away. If I am a soldier, I died for him all the way. But I'm just a poor little boy with nothing much to give. But I'm just, wait, but to offer my little hands and my little feet to glorify the one in the manger that was born, the hope and the light of this mixed up world. I give my heart to the one that was born to die and brings freedom to all mankind. I'm just a little boy today. I do bigger things for him one day. I give my life and my all to the one who calls me Jesus Christ was born to set me free. And this is what Christmas means to me. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're old or a little boy like Oliver. God can use you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sister Andrea, you're the next victim. I mean, person. <laughs> Did I scare you off, Sister Andrea? <laughs> Amen. Come give us a testimony. Praise the Lord, church. So as I was uh, driving to work the other day, I thought about, uh, I was thinking about a Christmas that I remember as growing up. And I had, and a couple came to my mind and I wanted to share them with you. So one year, I was probably a, in junior high, seventh, eighth grade. My dad, well, first of all, I was at my cousin's house, and my dad calls me and says, um, Andrea, your cousin Schwinn wants to meet you. And I said, my cousin Schwinn? And I was probably like four blocks away, so what do I do? I get all excited to go meet this cousin of mine, and I run home four blocks. I get in the house, I'm huffing and puffing, and I'm like, okay, where's he at, where's he at? And he's all, in the garage. And I'm like, in the garage? So I opened the door, and when I did, there was a blue 10-speed Schwinn bicycle. It had Schwinn real big on the bars. And I look over at my dad, and he is just laughing all crazy. And I'm like, really? I ran home for this? <laughs> but anyways, um, another time, we opened our gift, and I thought this was just wow. Like, my mouth really went wow. It was the humongous sugar daddy you had ever seen. And I'm like, I didn't, I was so speechless, but it took me and my sister probably a month to lick on that thing because it was <laughs> huge. Um, so I asked Jared the other day, son, what was your, what's one of your Christmases that you remember? And he said, uh, he said, well, when I got these mutant ninja turtles, and these things were about this tall, and he, anything that he had two of, he loved to fight. He thought he was a Power Ranger. So he, lo he would fight anything, whether it was dinosaurs, cars, whatever it was, he would fight them. And I asked Shaylin the other day, what was yours that you remember, sis? And she says, I don't know. They're all the same. That's my girl for you. Anyway, I, um, I do have a verse here, Isaiah 9, 6. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 
Aren't you glad tonight that we can, we have a God that we can go to in times of need? He is our counselor. He is our doctor. He is our everything. And I love the Lord tonight. And I, on behalf of the Wilsons, I want to let you all know that we love you. And we hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen. So usually it's Jared up here cracking jokes, but Jared, you might have got demoted. I think your mom outbeat you on that one. You know, we're going to have the sign team come up. Um, these little, these uh, young individuals have been practicing hard, so let's give them our full attention and worship with them. Because it's not just, it doesn't matter. We've sang songs in English and we've sang songs in Spanish, but there's some people that don't, that are deaf and can't understand. So there's a ministry out there for some people, and this is one of them. So let's worship with them. Amen. The chorale is going to come and sing a song, and then Sister Rebecca is going to be reading a poem after that. The name of the song is Wise Men Still Seek Him. I think that's such a great saying. Friend, today... Is a wonderful day to seek the Lord. Wise men still seek Him.
was a few days till Christmas. The room, it looked great. Decorations were up, everything in its place. The gifts were all wrapped in colorful wrapping, and there on the couch, Sarah lay napping. When suddenly she began to have quite a strange dream. Why did she have it? What did it mean? 
An angel appeared and said to her, Here, God's chosen you to visit for Christmas this year. This season is when you celebrate him, and with you this Christmas, he wants time to spend. She awoke with a start. Her mind began racing. She jumped up from the couch and round the room began pacing. What should she do? What should she bake? God was coming for Christmas. She had plans to make. She looked round the room and said, it needs more. She jumped in her car and then drove towards the store. At the end of the street, before she'd even got far, her neighbor was standing next to her car. On the side of the road, her hood standing open, she smiled and waved, her expression quite hopeful. Sarah kept driving, her face she kept straight. She had to get ready, she wouldn't dare make God wait. She thought, someone will stop and help will supply. And after God visits, then I will stop by. Her mind quickly moved to the things at the store, listing goodies and cakes and decorations galore. She saw in the lot one open space. She pressed on the gas and quickened her pace. She screamed in frustration as a car pulled right in. A squeal could be heard as her tires did spin. She parked far away, stomped into the store, buying an entire cart full and more. As she walked to her car, she heard a throat clear. She spun round and glowered at the man standing near. For money, he asked. Did she have some to spare? She snapped and she told him she had none to share. All the way home, she thought and she fumed. All of these problems had her in quite a mood. She was finally home. She quickly got busy, rushing around until she was quite dizzy. On the table, there sat a beautiful cake, some cookies and brownies on a shiny gold plate. She was ready for God to come and stop by. She wondered if he'd rather have pumpkin pie. Then all of a sudden, it was him. It was time. She ran to the door as she heard the bell chime. She flung the door open, but her excitement did end when she found on the doorstep, not God, but her friend. With tears in her eyes, she said, Sarah, please, would you join me in prayer? Would you fall on your knees? I have a dilemma I need help to solve. I know God can help me if on him we call. This friend, Sarah thought, she must leave. She must go. She'd command God's attention to share all her woes. Sarah said, at this moment, I've no time to spare, but you can count on me. I'll soon take you to prayer. A special guest I'm expecting, he soon will be calling. And her friend walked away, her countenance falling. All evening, Sarah waited. She fussed and she fumed. God never came, and the sun had gone down. She waited much longer, then began to weep. Angry and bitter, she soon fell asleep. Then it happened, the angel, the one she had seen, suddenly appeared again in her dream. Why, she exclaimed, did God never come? Christmas is ruined for me. This has not been fun. God did visit his promise, the angel replied. He stood on your doorstep, but you kept him outside. What, Sarah cried? God was not here. He didn't come. I would never reject him, not let him in my home. He came as your friend and asked you to pray, but you didn't have time and you turned him away. He came as a poor down and out beggar man. You only scorned him and would not lend a hand. He came in a car and parked in your space. He only received words of anger and hate. He stood at your corner, a neighbor in need, but you couldn't be bothered, pretended not to see. So you see, said the angel, whenever God comes, it isn't with trumpets or loud sounding drums. He often appears as a person in need, for you show love to him when you show love to these. Sarah fell to her knees and began to pray, to ask for forgiveness for her actions that day. A peace fell upon her, and with eyes shining bright, she knew God would visit some other night. She would be ready, she'd not fail again, and first thing tomorrow, she'd visit her friends. And then from that day, Sarah resolved to see every encounter as a visit from God. She'd show God. She showed God's love to everyone that she met and treated others with kindness everywhere that she went. And that is the way that we should all live. No matter how little, we all have something to give. In this dark and dreary world, shining a light. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night.
My, my. God, give us eyes to see what's right before us and obvious. And uh, I was trying to make that rhyme, but I couldn't make that rhyme. I just... Thank you, Sister Rebecca. Thank you, everybody that has participated to this point. Thank you, everyone that has come to join us here at Calvary today. I'm glad that you have taken this Sunday to spend here with us as we worship our King and Savior on this, on this very special day. We have set aside our special offering today for the purpose of giving a gift back to Him so that churches can be started across our nation. And we call it Christmas for Christ, and we've done it annually for many, many years, and uh, we're going to give that again today. This is not something you have to give to. If one of our guests, please understand, this is something we have prepared as a church to come and to give and to honor the Lord with. As, as we have made this commitment unto him. So if I could get a couple of ushers together. Uh, we haven't taken an offering with uh, offering bags in some time. And so we're going to do it today and receive this offering for Christmas for Christ. Would you pray with us that God would bless this, that God would use this for its intended purpose in Jesus' name. Master, you see these people, some giving out of their abundance. Some are giving the widow's might out of their sacrifice. I pray that you would honor it and that you would bless it. Lord, there's churches that are dependent upon the generosity of, of other churches. And I pray that we would not be so insensitive that we were not aware of the greatest need, and that is the souls of man. I pray that you would honor this offering and bless it Somehow multiply it, God, and turn around and bless your people back because we truly cannot outgive you. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. So the ushers are going to come. In the meantime, uh, before I give to you my message for this Christmas season, I have asked uh, the other young ministers and, and Brother O'Brien, to take just a moment of time and to read the Christmas story. So enjoy today, if you haven't sat down and read it yet through this season, listen as we give the account in Matthew and Luke, then we'll go back to Matthew and I'll finish up in Luke. But God bless you as we read the Christmas story today. Mine is found in Luke chapter number 1, verse number 26, starting. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee, named Daz Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And an angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel of, said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also... That holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, shall, she hath also 
conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing is, shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord hath bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. And it came into pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone in his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is to come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe laying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told by them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her, in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. And it was told unto them, and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Lastly, out of Matthew chapter 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he, born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east, and are come to worship him. 
When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all of the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. They said unto him, In Bethlehem in Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art thou not the least of the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship also. And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We may not have gold and we may not have frankincense, but why don't we lift up our voices and offer to him the fruit of our lips and let's thank him that he came into this world in Jesus' name. God, we are so grateful. Thank you for the story, but let it be more than just a history story to us. Let us be something we cherish. Let it be something as precious to us. I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to read you a couple of verses of Scripture to set the tone of what I'm going to say to you. Uh, this this afternoon, and one of them has already been read, but I want to read to you from Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and, ye, and call his name Emmanuel. And we already heard it in the word of the Lord, but that word in Manuel literally means God with us. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us, read it with me, a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Praise God. I'm so thankful that he came and brought us hope. Reason drives everything. Either stated or unstated. Whether it is conscious or unconscious. There is a reason for everything that we do. I want to take a little time this afternoon to just simply preach to you the title of my message, The Reason. It could be as basic as survival. It could be as noble as giving yourself to a great cause, understanding the motivation behind things brings greater clarity, greater understanding to the actions of mankind. There's a reason that we are gathered here today. I realize it's Sunday, and on Sunday we come to worship. That's just what we do on Sundays. But it's not just another Sunday, because this particular Sunday is the day that we have stopped and chosen to celebrate the birth of Jesus celebrate Christmas together as a church family. But what is the reason we celebrate Christmas Day? 
Of course, one of the popular sayings that are out there is so that we won't forget it's not all about Santa Claus and gifts and presents and all that kind of stuff. Reindeer and grandma getting ran over. But there is a reason for the season. And that reason is more than just giving gifts. Although, likewise, men, we still practice, many of us, giving of gifts. It is more than the gathering together of family and friends. Although I think that is absolutely one of the finest things to do on a Christmas. It's no fun being alone on a Christmas. It's, it's more than the, the laughter and the joy. I started to make Jared get up here and tell some stories just because we usually like him doing it. But, but it's more than just fun. It's more than just the laughter and joy that we share. The, it, the, the reason that we're here today is simply because of everything that we have read, everything that we've sung about today. It's because Jesus was born into this world. The reason is still all about Jesus. Can I get a bigger amen than that? Into a world that was filled with darkness, into a world that was filled with despair, Jesus came into that world. 400 years had passed between the last time that a God-voiced prophet stood up and preached to the nation of Israel. They had gone on through the motions, maintaining the status quo that they had had for so many years. 400 years, and it had been devastating years. They had t- seen the time that the temple that they had was desecrated, uh, not just demolished, but desecrated. They call it the abomination of desolations. And it was, it was a tremendous or tragic time when they came in there and literally slaughtered swine, pigs on the altar there in that holy place, making a mockery of the things of God resulting in their slavery, resulting in the time that the Romans and the Grecians came in and brought their control over the land of Judea. And there at the last, it was the Romans that had put him under such a bind. But they were going through the motions, but had lost all the joy. And Jesus came into a dark world just like that. Matthew chapter 4 talks about it, verse 14, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the land of Zebulon and the land of Nephilim by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region And shadow of death, light is sprung up. I want you to know that what was in the middle of darkness, that there was a light that entered into the world. And John said, darkness could not comprehend. That wasn't understand. It was the word literally mean to stop. It couldn't grab a hold. It could not arrest. It couldn't hinder the darkness. And I'm glad that this world was impacted by the coming of the light of Jesus Christ. History focuses on Jesus. All of time was measured either by B.C., before Christ, or A.D., which basically meant after his death. But nowadays in this time that we're living in, they're trying to change that to before the common era, BCE and CE, which is the common era. I want you to know something, friend. They, they can try to eradicate him all they want to. But when he brought light into this world, you can never put out the light. Darkness 
will never stop the light. The angel that day spoke to the shepherds and said, the, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. There was a reason he came in Galilee of the Gentiles. It was because he wanted them to know it's not just one group of people that can have it. And I'm so glad he did. For all of us that were unclean, for all of us that were Gentiles, uh, he opened it up so that we could have the opportunity to have the light just like anybody else had the light. But what was the reason Jesus came into the world. I'll tell you what it was for. It was to bring us that joy. It was to bring us that peace. Because with him there is peace in a troubled world. With him there is joy when everything else brings sorrow. I'm telling you with him you can take off the garments of heaviness and put on the garments of praise because with him Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. He came to show us a better way than what we had. He came to bring us salvation, for he shall save his people from their sins. You know what he literally came to do? He came to save me from myself. Because I was going in a direction, you were going in a direction that was contrary to the ways and the laws of God. But it came to show us you don't have to walk that road and you don't have to walk that way because I've got a greater way for you. And I'm so glad he made us and gave us an opportunity. There's a lot of people that don't have the, the opportunity yet to have heard the truth. And we've got a big job to do to preach it before the end time. But I'm telling you, you're here. And you're here because a message of Jesus Christ has already been preached. And you ought to thank God for that. The purpose he was born was his death. His purpose was Calvary. He knew and he tried to prepare the others. When he came to the temple, just as 12 years old, and he got caught up talking to the, to the well-educated lawyers and doctors of the day. In that, when his parents finally found him, they said, why have you done this to us? Jesus said, don't you understand? Wist not that I must be about my father's business. Twelve years old, he already knew his purpose. He didn't have to go into rebellion as a teenager to find his purpose. He didn't have to go through things like that to discover his purpose. But by the time he was 30 years old, he was ready to take this message to the world. And by the time he was 33... He had completed his task on this earth and was ready to fulfill his purpose. He was standing before Pilate. Pilate said unto him, Are you a king then? Jesus said, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause, for this reason, for this cause, came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. He said it in Luke like this, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Uh, I've come to that revelation a long time ago. I was that little lost sheep. I was the one that he came for. Because if he hadn't reached down and brought the grace of God 
to me to where I could grab this and understand this. I was on a path to absolute destruction. When I stop and I begin to think about where I would have been if it had not been for him in my life, I'm going to tell you something, friend. I would not be able to stand before you with any kind of character or integrity. No. I would have destroyed everything. I probably would have been one of those men on the streets begging for money or something. Who knows? Because at 15 years old, I'd already gotten introduced to drugs just like a lot of you. 15 years old, there were things that would offered that said, you don't have to live that life. But I'm so thankful that there was a message preached and touched my heart. And I began to realize I'm the reason he came. You want to know the reason? You want to know why we have Christmas? It's for you. It's why he came. Because you were lost undone without God and the only thing that could ever help you is if he shed his blood on a cross on Calvary and paid the ultimate price and gave the only worthy sacrifice so that you could find forgiveness deliverance and to be set free talked to a man just a day or two ago, pastor friend here in the state of California. He was in his mid-50s. It was 2005. He's 71 years old now, so you do the math. He was about 55 years old. He was driving his car in L.A. It had been a rainy season. His car hydroplaned. And uh, even though he was only going 40 miles an hour, when that car got out of control with the centrifugal force and everything else, when he hit that telephone pole, it literally ripped up his car. He said his dash was pushed way over, and it just tore up the entire left side of that car. It crushed. His leg, his leg was broken in three different places. His hip pelvis was broken in five different places. His arm was broken. Woke up in the hospital not knowing who he was. The mind taking over the ability to think because it's trying to deal with the swelling in the brain and the concussions and all the things that was gone. He said he tried to begin to think about little things. Why am I here? Where am I? What's going on? Then he began to think of very elementary things like, who am I? And he said, I couldn't even tell you my name. My memory was gone. But he said, I laid there in that hospital bed. And he said, God, if I'm in this kind of shape, broken like this, there's no more reason for me to live. And he said, God spoke into that hospital room. And he said, you could live for me. He said, I could be the reason that you live. And he said, I knew instantly I'd heard from God. He said, I couldn't have told you my name. He didn't know that it was the pastor's daughter of the church that he assisted when he was just a young man. Sister Joy Elms picked up the pen. And she began to write a song, and he sung it. He said, sitting there in that hospital bed, he said, I couldn't have told you the words in advance. But he said, I sang every verse, 
and I sang every chorus. And he began to sing. He's the only reason I live. But oh, what a reason. What a reason. He came for you. Now, he's the only, he's the only reason, reason I live. I live. But oh, oh, what a reason. I hope you feel that way. He paid the price for your sake. There's nothing in this world that is worth living for. He only lives to empty and longing for more. Oh, he's the only reason I care. But oh!
together and praise Him. Thank Him. Thank Him for Christmas. Thank Him for Calvary. Thank Him for the reason. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus, I pray over this congregation today. I pray as they leave here, as we fellowship together next door, I pray for them this week. I pray for them as they gather their family and friends together on that December 25th. I pray that they could pass up the Christmas uh, commercialism of the world, even though, Lord, we, we, we use it so that we can bless and take care of our loved ones. But I pray that this year they will not get past your presence and your feeling of being in the midst of them. I pray your blessings upon our church, upon our city, upon our world that desperately needs the light again. Shine into their lives this year. Be merciful to us this year. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Brother O'Brien wants to announce that our Christmas for Christ offering, we have taken up $6,000.69 for Christmas for Christ. $6,069, not 69 cents. God bless you. Thank you. Let's go across the way to the kitchen. They've got our, our uh, meal ready for us. Kids are going to have Christmas gifts over there. God bless you.